Hello, I'm Paul Stryer, an architecture consulting engineer with Cisco Systems. Today's lab is Cisco Unified Communications Manager 9.x New Features Lab, Part 4 of 6, URI Dialing. URI stands for Uniform Resource Identifier. An example of a URI would be John Doe at Cisco.com. A URI is made up of a user part, or the left-hand side, and a domain part on the right-hand side, separated by an at symbol. In Cisco Unified Communications Manager 9.x, URIs are aliases for directory numbers. URI calls on a local cluster are routed using partitions and calling search spaces, just like DNs. However, URI calls between clusters can't be routed using a prefix, and multiple clusters can have the same domain suffix, making it difficult to route based on the suffix. Inter-cluster routing of URI calls requires a way for the clusters to replicate their catalog of registered URIs to one another, and then look up and route the calls based on those catalogs. This is the purpose of Inter-Cluster Lookup Service, or ILS. ILS maps a URI to a cluster URI route string. Cisco Unified Communications Manager will then route the call to a SIP trunk by looking up a SIP route pattern that matches the cluster URI route string. ILS does not actually route calls, it simply matches a URI to a route string, which is then used to route the call. There must be a SIP route pattern configured that the cluster URI route string will match in order for the Cisco Unified Communications Manager to place the call across a SIP trunk. The objective for today's lab is as follows. Provisioning URI for directory numbers, configuring SIP trunks to a centralized cluster, configuring SIP route patterns, configuring URI syncing and ILS, and testing URI calling. In this section, we will test a phone call pre-URI configuration. In this test, we will make a phone call between Workstation number 3's Jetsy open source soft phone and Workstation 1's Jabber client. The first call will be a call by number. The second call will be a URI call that should fail due to non-configuration. Using a supported browser, navigate to the Cisco Unified Communications Manager Administrator webpage, enter your username, your password, and click Login. Once you are logged in, select Device, then Phone, click Phone, and select the phone that you wish to configure. Select the DN you wish to configure, scroll down to the directory URI section, and enter the URI you wish to enter. Select the appropriate partition if needed, click Add Row to add more aliases, and click Save. Again, we will test a call from Workstation 3 Jetsy client to the Workstation 1 Jabber client using URI. This call failed on the last attempt.
In this section, we will set up a SIP trunk to a central unified communications manager. Go to device, device settings, and SIP profile. Click find, and then click copy next to standard SIP profile. Enter a new name, enter a description, and click Use Fully Qualified Domain Name in SIP Request and click Save. Next from the menu, select device and trunk and click add new. In the trunk type field, select SIP trunk, then click next. Enter a name, a description, and device pull, and then scroll down to outbound calls. In the Calling and Connected Party Info format, select Deliver URI and DN in Connected Party, if available. In the SIP trunk security profile, select non-secure SIP trunk profile, and in the SIP profile, select your new standard profile. Then click Save. Next, we'll create a wildcard SIP route pattern by going to Call Routing and SIP Route Pattern and click Add New. Enter a star in the IPv4 pattern. Select your SIP trunk in the SIP trunk route list. And click Save. Next we're going to configure a unique enterprise cluster ID to enable ILS. From the menu, select System Enterprise Parameters, and in the first field, Cluster ID, enter a unique ID. Once you're done, click Save. Next, we're going to configure the cluster to exchange directory URI catalogs with a remote cluster. You do this by going to Call Routing, Enter Cluster Directory URI, 
and enter cluster directory URI configuration. Check the Exchange Directory URI Catalogs Remote Cluster box and then type a unique ID or route string into the route string field. Then click Save. In the next section, we're going to exchange Tomcat Trust Certificates between the Pod Communications Manager and the Central Site Communications Manager. In a supported browser, we're going to browse to the Central Site, specifically to the CCM Platform or OS Administrator. Enter your username, your password, and click Login. From the menu, select Security Certificate Management. Click Find. Next, locate the central Tomcat Trust Certificate and click on the hyperlink. Be careful to not select the IPsec Trust. We're looking for the Tomcat Trust. Click the download button and save the file to your local hard drive. Next, we're going to go to the CCM Platform or OS Administration webpage for the local Pod Communications Manager. Enter your username, your password, and click Login. On your Pod's OS Administrator, navigate to Security, Certificate Management, and click Upload Certificate, Certificate Chain. In the pop-up window, select Tomcat Trust in the certificate name, enter a description, and then browse for the file that we downloaded from the central server, and then click Upload File. Click Close to close the pop-up window. Click Find to confirm that the new certificate is there. Next, locate your pod's Tomcat Trust certificate and click on the hyperlink. Click download and save the certificate to your local hard drive. Returning to your Unified Communications Manager's OS platform, select Security, Certificate Management, and click Upload Certificate, Certificate Chain. 
In the certificate name field, select Tomcat Trust, then browse for your local certificate. Now click Upload File to upload the certificate. Now that both the central and local site have exchanged Tomcat Trust certificates, we'll now return to the local Unified Communications Manager administration webpage. Next, we will add the local pods cluster to an ILS network as a spoke cluster. Navigate to Advanced Features, ILS Configuration. In the Roll drop-down, choose Spoke Cluster. When you click Save, the ILS Cluster Registration window will open. Enter the registration server name and click OK. Once your pod registers as a spoke cluster to the ILS network, you should see a central cluster listed in the as a hub and your cluster listed as a spoke in the ILS clusters and directory URI import catalog listed at the bottom of the ILS configuration page. Next, we will attempt a call from pod 1 to pod 3 using URIs. At this point, the call has failed due to the fact that the ILS database has not updated yet. Returning to ILS configuration, we now notice that the ILS database is now up to date. Thank you for watching this video on Cisco Unified Communications Manager 9.x new feature, URI Dialing. And thank you for using Cisco Systems products.